This week's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at audibletrial.com forward slash DJ Force X. There are over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Hello, welcome to this week's DJ Force X podcast. This is episode number 76. Uh, and my special guest this week is Wednesday 13. Uh, they are just today releasing their new album, Condolences. Uh, it is out now via Nuclear Blast, via u- the usual outlets, digital and physical. Uh, we chat about the album, um, their forthcoming run of dates in Europe, uh, including Download Festival, um, which is a, a great festival. Uh, if you haven't been to it, go to it. Um, they got some great bands playing this year, including... Like I say, Wednesday 13. Uh, we chat about some other stuff as well. Um, but yeah, uh, that will be my guest coming up shortly. Uh, I just want to say thank you to all the listeners. I just checked a statistic. And apparently my show has actually hit the 10,000 individual download mark. Uh, which is pretty damn cool. Uh, that means um, across the 75 episodes that it has been downloaded at least 10,000 times <laughs> by different people. Um, which is a great statistic. I know it's been streamed a lot more. Because uh, I get those to, um, statistics as well, but I haven't actually um, equated those up yet to a solid number. Uh, but I know you're out there, so if you're streaming it, thank you. If you're downloading it, thank you. Uh, if you're just here for the one episode for Wednesday, welcome. Uh, you're welcome to stay as well. We've got um, a whole bunch of stuff you can go back and listen to uh, from Devil Driver, Candiria, um, I don't know, Double Experience. Uh, Cell Dweller, Blue Starly, Kansas, you know, the big carry on my wayward son, Um, uh, and loads, loads of others, loads of others. And if you're in a band as well, I've got some industry specials with music managers and and marketers and stuff like that. So you can go back, listen to those. Um, Just go and download and go to my website, djforcex.com. All the links are there. You can either go straight to my actual feed, which is uh, djforcex.com forward slash podcast, or you can listen to it via iTunes or Stitcher, Google Play, TuneIn Radio, all those places are hosting this show so uh thank you to those hosts and thank you to you for downloading this uh and if you get a chance use my sponsors uh that is always welcome to help kind of fund what i do kind of maintain a lot of the equipment which unfortunately some of it is actually failing and i do need to buy new mic leads um and a few other bits as well the audio quality at the start of this podcast is a little dicey but it gets better um just purely because my stuff is kind of <laughs> after about three or four years Generally, it needs a refresh, so the sponsorship links will help that because it helps. That's the part that needs funding um, on that front. That and it, it gives it a little, exp- a little extra exposure, I should say, before I'm stumbling over my words. So, rate, review, and share. Rate, review, and share. That's easy to do. You can hit those share buttons. You can hit um, the subscribe buttons, and you can review it. Give it a five star rating if you so wish. Anyway babbling always that call to arms side of things but if you can do it it will help it genuinely will so here is wednesday 13 enjoy So yeah, um, Wednesday 13, thank you um, for doing this again. <laughs> uh, how are you today? I'm good. I'm trying to wake up. It's still early here on my side of the world. Oh, okay. Where, where are you based right now? Uh, right now we are in uh, near Portland, Oregon, where uh, that's where the band rehearses at. It's kind of like our, our home base and uh, where we rehearse and have all of our equipment and everything. So, uh, yeah, so we just appear for the next uh, week rehearsing, and we do our very first show for the new record on Tuesday. Excellent, excellent. So yeah, new record, Condolences, uh, which is out on uh, June 2nd on Nuclear Blast. Um, I've been fortunate enough to hear a couple of tracks from it already. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's the tracks I've heard. Um, I thought I heard. Uh, what the Night Brings was the first one I heard from it, uh, which is really cool, kind of, uh, kind of good dance track. Um, on that respect, and uh, Blood Sick as well, I've heard. 
Thank you. Which is really cool. And a couple of the others, well, I think Cruel, Cruel to You and Omen Amen. I think oh, the ones cool. you have on preview as well on some of the sites. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's shaping up to be a cool album. And, um, yeah, so what, what, can, what can the fans expect from it? Is there anything you've got that you're really excited about that you're waiting to unleash from it? Um, I mean, just for us, it's, we're just excited to get this record out. I mean, we, re- we recorded it last summer, and we finished it up in September. Um, so it's been quite a while since it's, it's been done. So for us to just get this out for the fans is, is, is such an exciting thing for us, and it comes out next week. And um, but, as, but as far as what the fans can expect, I mean, uh, I, you know, at, at this point in the game, I don't, I don't even know – what to expect anymore? Like, uh, like I've been reading reviews for the for, for the record now, and the reviews are great, but people hear it different than how I hear it, and yeah. it's a positive thing. But I, I, at the end of the day, I know we made a good record that we like, and I think the fans are going to like it. How much they like it, I, I don't know. I, I hope they love it and they think it's the best one so far because I feel that way about it. But um, I guess we'll find out next week when it comes out. I, I we feel good about it, and and my gut feeling has always been is. If we write good music and we and we're happy with it, the fans will follow along with us the same way. And uh, and we feel like we've made the best record so far of our of our career. So uh, we're just excited to get it out, and hopefully everyone else reacts to it the way we are. Excellent, excellent. No, like I said, the tracks I've heard have been really good, and I've I've enjoyed it thus far. And I've been following you guys for a while. Um, I'm I'm originally from the UK, and and you guys toured over there quite regularly, or from what I remember, um, or there was like prominent tours at least on that front. Um, and, um, yeah, um, I'm looking forward to, um, maybe seeing you guys again soon. I'm currently based out in Florida. Um, but I am, I am heading back to the UK, um, in the next couple of months. Uh, I've been over here for about five years, so, um, I'm heading back that way to in and around London. So I'm hoping to catch you guys over there, but you, you guys are about to go over there. Um, and you're going to play a couple of the festivals in Europe. Uh, including download. Um, yeah. So, uh, ha- how are you preparing for that that particular run of shows? Because you've got a couple of the, uh, is it the Dynamo Festival as well? You're playing in. Uh... Yeah, well, we're doing that. We're doing a festival in in Germany. I'm not sure how to even say it correctly. It's some <laughs> gothic Stefan festival or something. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, it sounds amazing. It looks super cool. A lot of bands are on that uh, that that I know and like and have been playing that thing for years. So, uh, really cool to be on that. And then. We do a few club shows in between that, and then we finish up on the uh, download on the on June tenth. And uh, but just getting prepared for download is um, for me. I'm just trying to go beyond anything I've ever done as far as uh, preparing for a live show. Like uh, we've we've have so many things we're trying to pull off for this show that I've never done before, and uh-huh. hopefully it comes off as, as good as I think it will. And we don't have any spinal tap moments. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but no, we. Uh, I've been telling everyone for a while. My my goal a like, two years ago was to get signed a nuclear blast and just do things on a different level and, and, and play download. And we got the label and we got download all in that little same time. So, uh, and I kept telling everyone, I was like, if we get on download this year, I'm going to put every dime I have into our production and show. So, uh, fingers crossed, uh, we're putting our biggest production show on and, uh, for download we've ever tried before so uh hopefully it, it goes well but uh if it, even if it doesn't go well we tried yeah we'll no, see it's, what happens no it's at least you if if you if you go through your head and you've tried it then you know even if it works if it doesn't work you know at least you attempted it and it's that situation exactly. of like you'd rather regret doing it than regret not doing it because you never know what's going to happen exactly well that sounds really cool because uh i was i was hoping to get back in time for download unfortunately i won't be i'm gonna be back like i say about a month or so afterwards so um good luck with that and uh yeah um i hope it goes off well for you on that one um so um just just back to record you mentioned uh you wanted to sign to nuclear blast like prior to this i was i was looking at the discography and i, I noticed you've you kind of you've been on you had roadrunner for a bit um and then you i think what was the next one it was uh rico disc rico disc yeah is that right yep and then you decided to release on your own um label is that right yeah i mean um yeah, the, uh, basically, my first my first album with uh, for Wednesday Thirteen was in two thousand five, and that was signed to Ruiner Records, and yep. that was my first solo record we did. And then uh, 
after that record, uh, we parted ways with Roadrunner, and I did a deal with Ryko Disc. And then after that, we did a deal with, I believe it was called Demolition Records in the UK. Okay. And uh, so the first three records were done on labels, and just uh, it just, you know, every record, even though I'm happy with the album and how they turned out, just, just the process behind it just wasn't set up so well, and it just didn't do the best thing. And uh, so when it came time... Um, to do the fourth Wednesday record when I did that in 2011, you know, I'd been like, I've been on labels three times, you know, what should I do this time around? Should I go to a label? Should I do it on my own? And around that time, a lot of the, there wasn't a lot of bands doing it, but it was that whole crowdfunding thing was starting yeah. just, some bands were, were starting to do it. And at first I was like, well, I was like, you know, this is a fan oriented thing. So let's make it, a super fan thing. So I got really into doing the crowdfunding thing, made all these special quirks and things for the fans. If you pre-order the record, you get a signed, uh, you know, lyric sheet or this yeah. or that. And we just, we kind of did that for a few years and it got really exciting. Like I made a thing, like I don't think anybody's ever done this before, but for two of my records, I had a, inside the album, I basically uh, had a, our artist draw an entire graveyard and tombstone scene. And I, basically had 13 fans that could buy their own tombstone for my album. Wow. And uh, so I was just basically doing little things to make it more interesting for the fans and not just do it where it was a, hey, buy our record and we'll sign this. Like, yeah. no, we'll put you in the album. We'll, you get to be a part of our history. And uh, so that was fun for a few years, and I, and I did that. But over you know the past six, seven years of doing that, I just started realizing it was a lot of fun and a lot of work, but I really kind of just started to realize, like, I'm not really reaching out to anyone new. I'm not getting in front of new people. So yeah. with a label like Nuclear Blast and their roster and what they can do, uh, you know, just puts us in front of a, not only in front of our, our fans we have, it just puts us in front of a different audience. And um, so that was something I just felt like we needed to do. We just, we kind of, have did all we can to our to our fans, but we need to open the door to the newer fans, and yeah. that's what we're trying to achieve with this this record and this, and this thing with Nuclear Blast is just opening the doors for us. Yeah, I was going to say, was that the main attraction from from Nuclear? Obviously, they're a well established like rock and metal label within the within this within this um, culture. Um, but was that the main attraction? Was just trying to find that different audience, um, or was there some other other aspects with that as well? I mean, basically for me, when it when it came time to look for a label, I mean, when you think about the the rock labels or what's out there, I mean, yeah. you really you, you can't you can't you can't think of a better label than Nuclear Blast. They they run the game yeah. and their roster and what they do for the label speaks for itself. And I have a lot of friends and bands that are on Nuclear Blast. You know, before we signed, you have Hate Breed and Children of Bodom and. Um, you know, Slayer, Machine Head, all these guys are friends of ours, and and uh, I knew that they set their records up well, and uh, but it, I just kind of went with, well, cool, they're they're supporting all my friends and all their bands. They were on Roadrunner back in the day, so uh, and there's a lot of people that were that worked for Nuclear Blast that used to work for Roadrunner, so it was kind of a welcome thing because I knew a lot of the people, and uh, it just it just worked out. And uh, but again, I. I can't say enough good things about how much they're promoting this record and how they're treating us as a band right now. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, I was going to say because um, with with the sort of the the split of Roadrunner when it when it kind of got bought out and and they kind of mm-hmm. downsized it, I know a lot of the staff went over there. A lot of the promotional staff that I'm in contact with as well, uh, obviously being on the radio and being a club DJ as well, I had a lot of those contacts and um, yeah, just noticing that 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 they kind of took over that that um, I mean they're always kind of big in Europe generally nuclear blast mm-hmm. but then once the roadrunner sort of side of things started to sort of uh dissipate and they became the global metal rock label um they yeah got, i mean you look they... at it, i mean they're, they're kind of they're kind of picking up all the bands that roadrunner used to have you got fear factory you got yep. machine head you got you know it's just like um so just getting on that roster with all those people is just we're in good company yes definitely definitely um so uh, after your um european stint um, you're coming back, obviously, to the States, and uh, you've got quite a tour uh, coming up, uh, going through mm-hmm. June and July. Um, what, what can, uh, what can, uh, is, are you taking the production with you on that tour, or is this uh, sort of more of a sort of club tour, get the record out there, get people to see the shows, and then kind of ramp it up 
Um, for me, so. for, for me, uh, every, everything I do has to be big and over the top. So, uh, <laughs> so with with this, with with this show and this tour, I mean, what we did last year, I thought was big and over the top, and I just have to, I have to pop that. I have to bury that from last year. So, uh, for us with this with this new tour and record, like, uh, it's just a whole. It's, as much as the record may sound different and like a new level to people, I think when they see the live show, it'll be the same way because we've we've taken we put all this money into a, a light show and just everything. So it's just, uh, I just try to take the band to, to, to the next level and just make it a visually appealing thing to walk into a venue and see us, whether you like us or you don't even know who we are, you'll walk away and be like, I can't believe I just saw that. What did I just see? That was, that was amazing. That was entertaining. And, uh, so this, again, it's all about entertainment and just putting on the biggest, best show we can. And I don't care if it's an arena or if it's a, a club bar, you know, I yeah. will still try to put on the biggest show I can in that place. And for me, that's the that's one of the most uh, you know challenging, you know, rewarding thing is to to play a tiny club and to pull off a huge, almost arena show inside of a club like that. Mm-hmm. You know, and people see it and go, "Wow, I can't believe I just saw that in a bar." Yeah, that's insane. You know, they just they just it's, again, I want people to walk away and 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 uh, just feel entertained and see like they or at least walk away feeling like they have they've seen something they've never seen before. Cool. Cool, excellent, excellent. And uh, you've got a couple of uh, bands coming with you as well. Um, you've got Once Human, and um, is it Gabriel of the Apocalypse? Yes. I got that right. Uh, what can you tell me about those two bands? Um, um, the, the Gabriel band, we've, we toured with them, um, I believe, last year for a couple of weeks on one of our, our tours, and they were really cool guys, cool band. Um, and the other band, Once, Once Human, um, we haven't toured with them yet, uh, but I was a fan of them prior to the tour. I just, uh, me and my drummer had their records, the buzz their records and really liked the band a lot. And uh, when it came time to do this tour, I'm talking to my agent, and he's like, well, who do you want to go out with? And I mm-hmm. went, I really like this band, Once Human. Will you call them up? I was like, they'll probably tell us no, but hit them up. And we called them, and they're like, yeah, we'll go out with you guys. And I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> Excellent. So, uh, yeah, so it's cool. You know, a lot of times we tour with bands, and I don't really get a chance to pick out bands that I like or I'm a fan of. So yeah. for this upcoming tour, it's, so this is cool because I'll want to go watch those guys every night. Like they're almost like my they amp me up before I play. That's awesome. So, uh, but yeah, they're they're a cool band. They're crazy talented musicians, and uh, they're a unique band. So I'm excited to get on the road, and I think our fans are going to enjoy them a lot. Excellent, excellent. That's good to hear because I'm obviously I, I've. I'm always curious about that process because I've I've been through the point of, of of being a musician in a band, releasing an album, being sort of an unknown band, and having opportunities to tour with bands of your stature. Um, and mm-hmm. I was just kind of curious on, on 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 your part. You know, obviously you said like not you don't always get to pick them, um, but it's always good to hear that the, the ones you're going out with like right now you have actually picked. You asked for them to come with you, and they you know obviously they accepted. So um, I was just uh, sort of seeing how that culture is changing as well because obviously back back when um back when i was in a band it was mm-hmm. late 90s early 2000s so there was still the sort of um they call it buy-ons and stuff like that uh where yeah. you know, the support band would pay x amount and you know and it, it wasn't really a relationship with the bands um but i've noticed a lot more tours yeah. i've been speaking to people and other bands and they've kind of um you know they've been picking their bands you know, right. rather than yeah, having... I mean, like I said, I, I don't get to do it all the time, but when you, when I do get to pick bands out that we like, and that that makes it that makes it even more fun, you know. Um, yeah. But like, like we tour so much, and we have so many bands we tour with. But like I said, just to have a band that we tour with that you actually like and recognize their songs just, just makes it even better. Cool, cool. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, are you um planning a full European tour post this American one, or are you still going to do sort of more states over here? <clears throat> um, as far as this touring and uh, everything that we try to do, I mean, I, I try to tour as much as I possibly can and try to get to every area that I possibly can. And fortunately, we're not known in certain places as much as other places. So when we book a European tour, we can't go out for six weeks because we're not that well known for six weeks we can do that so uh so our european tour we have right now we have scheduled is in november and i think it's for three weeks and it's just scattered from uh everywhere from germany to to uh, i think helsinki um 
but we had a lot of lot of dates and a lot of scattered dates and uh hopefully with this new record and 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 the label that that opens doors for us where we can do more of a, of a European tour and do it longer and stuff so that's you know, it's just a, it's a building process yeah. and uh but right now we we definitely have um we have three weeks booked for uh Europe in November and okay. we'll be announcing that in uh, I think next week okay cool excellent excellent I look forward to that because I'll be back in the UK by then so if you're hitting any of the uh UK venues I'll try and come along <laughs> yeah we, we, we yeah we, we start in the UK the last week of October uh we're in the UK okay excellent I'll keep an eye out for that um so I've got a couple of questions left for you now um and uh, just sort of like more questions about yourself and uh, your influences and whatnot uh, so this first one, um, what are your um, three top albums, the ones that kind of mold you to the musician um, person that you are today? Good question. Um, I don't know. Uh, my my favorite band of all time is, is, is the original Alice Cooper band. Uh, oh. Their original, their first four or five albums they did um, are, are my favorites, and I can always no matter what mood i'm in i can always put on an old alice for record and yeah. it just makes makes my day better so uh if i had to pick one from that from that lineup it would be the album love it to death that's nice. my that's my favorite alice record of yeah. all time uh even, even the cover got banned because alice had his thumb hanging out at his crotch and it got banned <laughs> because everyone thought it was his, his dick hanging out nice i love so alice one of the first band and uh, first band album cover so uh i thought that was just an extra Special yes. thing for that record being so cool is it got banned. So I would say Love It to Death. Uh, my other favorite record of all time would be David Bowie's uh, Ziggy Stardust and Spiders from Mars record is another one of my favorite albums of all time. Just like I could be in the worst mood ever and put that record on, and it just kind of makes it all all better. Yeah. Um, so uh, and for a third, man, I can't wait. It's hard to pick a, a third record. Um, I don't know. I mean, th- those two records were moody. Um, if, if I had to pick a, I would I would pick two old ones, and I would say of of, of my recent years, in the past seven eight years, uh, music that's changed me and and made uh, made me become a new fan is uh, the band Killing Joke. Oh, cool! Um, yep. I discovered I discovered them about seven years ago, and they've become like my new favorite band since Alice Cooper. Cool. And uh, so their their self titled record they did in uh, in 2003 that Dave Gold plays the drums on is one of the most insane, heaviest, just that record just changed my life. I've never heard anything like it. And, uh, and I still listen to it when I hear it. It's like, it, it, it's still as fresh and new as it was when I first hear it every time. And I wore that record out. Like if you've been around me for the past seven years, you've heard me play that more than enough. <laughs> and uh but yeah that record was uh for me it was discovering like they put on a new band but it was new for me and uh they just they changed a lot of things for me musically cool cool excellent choices there um i gotta say i love alice cooper and david bowie obviously as well being from that neck of the woods um but yeah i, was, I saw recently I think alice cooper got together back together with the original lineup for a short show i believe it was or i think they recorded yeah the i almost i almost I almost flew out for that. I had rehearsals coming up and just everything with the tour. I didn't get a chance to do it. Um, I watched I watched all the videos online and I, like I said, they're my favorite band of all time. And uh, back in uh, 2010, uh, at the Revolver Awards in Los Angeles, uh, I got to inter- I got to introduce the Alice Cooper band for the first time, their very first show in since 1974. Wow! Uh, and I got to inter- I got to introduce them on stage, and that was for me that was just like wow yeah how cool is this <laughs> excellent that's awesome so um when you're not um making music uh do you have any hobbies or anything else you kind of uh you do away from the music it's it's i mean for me I, i'm so consumed with music and what we do like uh i mean i, I manage the band i'm pretty much consumed with this 24 7 i don't okay. really feel like i ever have downtime um not that it's a job or anything. I just, I just, I really like what I do, and I'm just always involved in it. Uh, so I don't really feel like I ever have downtime. At least I don't ever give myself that freedom that I've, I'm always working on the music. But, uh, but any, I mean, as far as if I do have downtime to do anything, I, I literally just watch 
movies or, or read conspiracy theory books and things like that. And uh, so I don't really have a whole lot of downtime to okay. do anything. I pretty much devote 24-7 to, to music. Cool. Cool. Well, Wednesday, um, one final question. Uh, where's the best place to reach out to you guys? Where's the... Uh... Where's the sort of like, obviously you've got your website, um, official Wednesday 13.com, uh, but is there any social media that you're overly active on that people can connect with you? Oh, oh yeah. I mean, uh, most of our fans know that I run my Twitter and my Facebook and, um, uh, you know, and I communicate with them. So that's usually the place to, to see all the latest, you know, that and our Instagram account, um, all that stuff is I pretty much keep everything updated there as much as I can. And I try to keep in contact with, with fans and stuff. I'm not the guys on there 24 seven going, Hey, talk to me. Let's just, you know, but I, I keep our fans updated and they know what's going on. Um, but, uh, but yeah, that's, uh, that's something I, I run myself. So anyone that wants to see the band live and in, in action or, or at the moment, they can find us on our Facebook and, and Twitter and stuff. Excellent. Well, Wednesday again, thank you very much for your time. Uh, I very much appreciate it. Uh, good luck with the tour and the album. Um, thank you. Which is out soon. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Um, like I said, I've watched you guys from, from the pit, if you will, um, on a few occasions. And uh, yeah, it's really nice to actually speak to you. So cool. cool man. Thank you for your time. All right, man. You have a good rest of your day, okay? Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.